Well, with this video, I want to show you what happened to me with the AMD Radeon 7 graphics card. And now please do not panic, the card's fine and I'm fine too. Some of you may know we are offered some very tempting options in the Radeon Wattman settings in the Radeon overlay. Those being automatic GPU and memory overclocking, as well as automatic GPU undervolting. Exactly that can be done in just a matter of a single second with one single click. So this video is about undervolting. How to get to those settings and what you should look out for, you'll find out in this video. However, this one's a bit different because my attempt was unsuccessful more or less. So if you don't mind watching me fail, then stick around. If you dislike stuff like that, feel free to click away now, I warned you. All right, usually just like with overclocking, you would get the tools such as the MSI afterburner for instance, and then tinker with the GPU voltage manually. But this is exactly what I will not be doing today, something I regret in hindsight. Just like Nvidia by now offers a so-called OC scanner feature, which overclocks graphics cards automatically, AMD wants to keep up and offers something comparable. With AMD's more powerful graphics cards, undervolting always was a hot topic. No wonder since for those that still don't know, undervolting basically is, as the name already suggests, reducing the default stock GPU voltage set by the manufacturer. Ok, that doesn't only apply to GPUs, but can also be done with CPUs. The benefits of doing that, in theory, are lower temperatures and power draw, without actually facing performance losses. At least that's in theory. And how does that work, some might ask? Well, easy, we're talking of the so-called silicon lottery. Every CPU and GPU that is sold has a fixed voltage range. That amount of voltage is known to work for all CPUs or GPUs of the same model guaranteed. And just like it is with overclocking, same applies to undervolting. Some chips actually require less additional voltage to achieve a specific clock speed or can be run perfectly with a lower voltage than given by the manufacturer. The thing is, manufacturers could fine tune their products individually, but that would be really expensive, so it makes sense they do it this way. So this is where we, the consumers, come into play and can start tinkering around. Alright, but let us not beat about the bush. Once you have your AMD graphics card driver installed, you can enter the Radeon overlay by holding down the keys Alt and R. For tuning, you'll have to go into the Wattman settings. Under tuning control, we have some tempting options. While you could enter manual values here, I at least do not see any possibility of adjusting the GPU voltage. Now when clicking on undervolt GPU and applying that setting, you're done actually. However, I did want to know how the voltage is looking before and after this procedure in GPU-Z with the Fermax stress testing tool running in the background. Well, much didn't change here, but still, there is a small decrease. Of course, I also did double check the GPU clock before and after. At first glance, there doesn't seem to be a real noticeable difference. But is it just me or does the GPU clock after undervolting drop by a fair bit for a short amount of time here and there? Well, this might be something we can ignore. But what about the detailed performance numbers? Do we really see lower temperatures and power consumption? And what do you think is going to happen now? According to the video title, something must have gone wrong or not quite as planned. Does this setting perhaps affect the performance negatively? Or why else would I advise you to rather not use use the auto undervolt feature.
congrats to all the survivors who made it through what could be the most boring test results of all time. Just in case you didn't happen to rest your eyes while the tests were shown, you have surely noticed the results are pretty underwhelming. No surprise, luckily there is no negative impact on performance noticeable after undervolting. Well, that's how it should be after all. It's just shocking how little the power consumption and temperatures decreased. Sure, we are looking at slightly improved values now, and don't get me wrong, those weren't bad to begin with, it's just that they could have been a bit better. But oh well, 10 watts less at the end of the day doesn't make a real difference on your power bill. And 2 degrees Celsius lower on the temps, well, as you saw yourself, automatic undervolting doesn't seem to do the trick just yet. It would probably still be the better choice to invest some time and do it yourself. I'm sorry for not actually including real undervolting results, but for that test, I simply ran out of time. All the time I had, I wasted on this miserable test here. Well, it seems I've bet on the wrong horse and now did also waste your precious time. But at least this video has a good takeaway. All Always be skeptical when it comes to automatic overclocking, undervolting features and the likes. What seems to be too good to be true often is just that. At the end of the day, it's always wiser to overclock or undervolt yourself, all manually. In the upcoming overclocking video of the Radiant 7, I did it manually, I promise. And now, go ahead and feel free to make fun of me, I deserve it. Hopefully you could learn at least a thing or two from this video. And as always, thanks a lot for watching.